All right, so we're gonna play some pixel logic by peak and I'm going to propose a general solution method and then just go over a few examples as well as some little nifty tricks besides the main chunk of what I'll show you um, So let's get right to in right into it. First of all, it doesn't matter um, Whether there's one contingent group or whether there's multiple blocks in one group. So for example, we've got three, two, two. We know the grid size is 10, right? That you can see that um, once you get used to the grid sizes a little bit straight away. Now, you might ask yourself, do we know, like just by looking at that, do you know whether you can fill that in straight away and how much, if so? For that, I can propose a solution method. So, um, let's say that you take the minimum size of a group. For that, you just add up all the blocks in that group, right? Three, two, and two gives you seven. And a minimum of one space in between the group. So that's one less amount of spaces than there are amounts of groups. You could also just look at these little gaps in between the numbers, right? Those are two gaps. So it's minimal of two extra squares added to our seven, right? So that's seven plus two is nine. So that means that we got a minimum size of nine. So if we added that up, that means we would have one space remaining, which means that we have two potential positions um, for the entirety of our group. Doesn't mean that within that group, everything is aligned the same way, but that is the, uh, just regarding the total size, right? All right, so, and that's going to tell us everything we need to know. So first of all, what we can do for each block within that group is take that block size and if we take the let's just take the topmost orientation so we just instead of taking three on the bottom like this or three in the center somewhere and this we're just gonna take the topmost configuration and as you can see because three plus two plus two is seven uh sorry so three plus two plus two is seven right uh, we have one space remaining at the bottom here and the other orientation would have been like this right so just for visualization's sake I'll show you that right now what it looks like so now you see that these are overlapping but in order to be fast I can say oh see if you visualize that in your head you have the answer but you want to be faster than that so what you do is you you can find a pattern here as you can see if we had um, three remaining spaces or sorry, if we had two remaining spaces, so this would have been our total group size, something like three, two, one, or three, one, two. Let's take that example. We can see how it changes and make our conclusions there. So three, one, two, three, one, two, and then see which overlap there. Where then we'll make our general formula, right? As you can see, this one is the only one that is always connected and I knew that beforehand uh, for the very simple reason for a very simple reason so what you need to do is take the amount of spaces you have remaining at the bottom that's two subtract that from each block size the ones that are bigger than zero will have an overlap how many is exactly what the sum uh, or what the result of that computation is so three minus two equals one means you have one block remaining where that is is also very simple that's simply oriented towards the bottom of the topmost block, right? Because it's in the center. The center is formed by taking the bottom and the, sorry, the topmost configuration and the bottommost configuration and just looking at what overlaps in the middle. So if you had three squares overlaps, let's say you know you have two squares overlap, for example, you know you just take one, two, three, right? So you just, if you have one space on the top here, that's one, two, three. If you have two spaces on the top here, that's one, two, three. With the t where, where you take the block to be at the topmost, um, as far to the top as possible. So, that gives us a general solution method. Now let's start applying that. So whenever, and, and in general, that means that whenever the block size exceeds that, um, essentially the grid size, minus the minimum size of the group. That's when we know we have overlaps that we can calculate. So here, 332 is, it gives us a total of 10, right? So we only have one configuration. Another way of doing that would be to say um, 10 minus 10 is zero, but that's silly, of course. 
3, 1, 2. So we got 6 plus 2 equals a minimum size of 8. Th eight 10 minus 8 is 2. That means 3 minus 2 is 1 overlap. So 1, 2, 3 towards the bottom here. Bottommost block of the topmost configuration. And all the other ones are completely unknown. 5, 1, and 1. That's 5 plus 1 plus 1 is 7. 2 gaps is 9. Now we already have some information, but let's pretend like we didn't know these blocks, right? Let's just pretend that for a second. That we have no extra information. Um, that means that we had one space. Essentially, the easiest way of calculating is not to use the four blocks and say, oh, I need four blocks, and then I need to do that at the rightmost. You can say you need to have one space remaining. Um, and that means you just take that space from the leftmost side and then start counting how many blocks you have remaining. In this case, that's four. If this block were, let's say, just one, then you'd say one, and then here you're already stopped. This space you need to leave open, but that's also where your block size ends. Let's say you had three, but you also know that you have, you have to leave three spaces open. Then you're like, in the leftmost configuration, you got the three on the left side, so it's one, two, three, but you need to leave three spaces open, so we have no overlap. So in this case, that would be leave one space open, right? That's the 10 minus 9. That's the space you leave open over here. And then just take the leftmost configuration like this. This is the overlap. We already knew this one. And because of that, obviously, our space just got restricted. Now our space looks like this. Our space is... Um, let me just... Our space now consists of these, right? Because this one has to be left open and this one has to be left open. And our space on the left side, on the right side for the extra one block is over here. But since this is just one space, we can fill it in. All right. So, um, and, and obviously you can always choose to fill these in. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it's not that useful. It's just extra visualization, but it costs you a little bit of time. So be wary of that when you're actually parceling. One and seven. That means you got 8 plus 1 is 9. That means you go 1 from the top and just go 6 upwards. 9. You know that's 10 minus 1 means 1 space on either side. Just like that. Also, in this case, because it's just one group, you know it's in the center of this space. So you know there's one space on either side. The other way of doing it would be to say that you go 1... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And then here, this is the leftmost configuration that you're using there, right? Um, all right. Obviously, we could use any configuration. Like, if we use the rightmost configuration, we'd be taking away the rightmost uh, block and then going towards the left. S result will always be the same, of course. 4 and 1, we see he here we have two blocks. We know that this will only extend um, to over here. Now, if we if we look at this, right, so let's say you could have these two. Um, let me cross this one out. So one configuration you could have is this one. The other one would be this one. And you can see there's no other configurations there, right? So this one and the one that ends over here um, are the only options. So this block is now known. And that's simply because... Um, we're stuck at the left side here. We can't do any spaces on this side. So we know that we can, if we have four over here, um, on the left side, there's plenty of space, but on the right side, we ran out. So the leftmost configuration is like this. Um, and all the squares to the right of what we already had is going to overlap. So we take this one out. So this is one, two, three, four. Okay. So this nine one is obvious. And that gives us this piece is 7, which means we can fill this one out. That means that over here, the 8 block is almost completed. 3, 2, and 2 is an interesting one. So this one has to be a block of 3, which can't cross over here. So this one, um, this one might be a block, but then the configuration is like this. But it can't stretch. We can't fill in both of these. So they're mutually exclusive. This one is filled in then this one is not filled in. If this one is filled in, then this one is not filled in. So they're mutually exclusive, which is slightly different from the overlap technique. Now you have a mutual exclusivity to keep in mind. All right, so this one we can fill in. 
anywhere we have a gap like this you want to ask yourself do we know if we need to conjoin the gap and 